2 Timothy chapter number 1. The Apostle Paul is in prison. He knows before long he's going to the chopping block and his head's going to be removed from his shoulders. While in prison, he's reflecting and the Lord inspires him to write letters to churches and to individuals. And one of the individuals is Timothy and this will be the final time that Timothy hears from the Apostle Paul and in this letter, this epistle that he writes, he charges Timothy to remain faithful to the things he's been taught and to preach the word of God. And with all that in mind, let's begin reading in verse number one. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, now, Timothy was not his physical son, but he had won Timothy to the Lord. And he's his spiritual son. goes on to say this, Grace, mercy, and peace. Boy, we got that in our life. We got a mouthful. Huh? Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also... Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Let's pray. Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you again for this beautiful day. Thank you for being a wonderful God. Thank you for the house of God, the people of God, the word of God, the work of God. Thank you for uh, shedding your blood on Calvary for the propitiation of our sins. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the day that you uh, revealed yourself unto us, the day that, Lord, uh, we uh, were convicted of sin, the day, Lord, that through that conviction we trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, thank you for all that you have done. Uh, Lord, we could spend eternity and never thank you enough for the good grace, the sweet mercy, and the wonderful peace of God. Uh, now, Father, we thank you for this good uh, attendance in your house this morning. We thank you for the good jail services you blessed us to have this morning. Thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you, Lord, for good choir singing and uh, other singing. And thank you for the reading of the Word of God. Uh, Father, we pray that you'd bind the powers of hell. We pray that you'd put a hedge about us this morning. We pray for the next few minutes uh, that, God, you'd speak to our hearts. Uh, I pray, as Brother Josh has already prayed, uh, that, God, revival would break out in our midst. Uh, God, thank you for what you're doing down there at Cannon Mountain. And, God, uh, you're no respecter of persons. Uh, God, if you can do it there, you can do it here. Uh, and, God, I pray your people uh, would have a desire for you uh, and for your righteousness. Uh, Father, I not only pray for revival. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are hurting. Uh, I pray for those that, God, are facing grave obstacles. Uh, God, I pray for those, uh, Lord, that are just seeking a touch from heaven. God, I pray for those, uh, uh, Lord, that are hungry. Uh, I pray for those, Father, uh, uh, Lord, that uh, 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 just came in struggling and limping. Uh, Father, I pray for the next few minutes uh, that you would be made uh, high and lifted up. Much would be made of Jesus. Uh, and, Father, I pray people get the help that they need. Uh, Father, we don't even know what's in our own hearts. Uh, God, I pray you'd search our hearts and try the reins of our hearts. Uh, and God, administer a balm of Gilead. Uh, and God, do a work that only you can get the credit for. Uh, and God, I pray uh, that folks uh, would leave out 
rejoicing uh, and that the Lord did a work in their life. Uh, but Father, I pray especially in a crowd this size, uh, if there are some that do not know Thee, uh, they may know about You, uh, but they do not know You. Uh, Father, I pray over the next few minutes uh, uh, the sweet Holy Ghost of God uh, would go to where they are uh, and through cords of love uh, would begin to work in their hearts uh, and draw them uh, to an altar of repentance uh, where they'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Uh, Father, I pray uh, that you'd be glorified and magnified, uh, your people edified. Uh, I pray the devil would be terrified uh, over everything that will transpire over the next few minutes. Uh, now, Father, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, help us, we pray, uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy and glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that we ask it all. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things here. In these verses that I read, uh, the Apostle Paul uses the word remembrance three times. Now, if he'd have said it one time, that'd been important. But he says it three times, really, over a course of three or four verses. Uh, he uses the term remembrance. Now, remember, I said he's in prison. He's reflecting. While he's looking back over what all God's done through his life, uh, through his missionary journeys, uh, through the churches he's established, uh, through the men he's trained, uh, through the souls that have been saved, uh, through the providential hand of God in it all, uh, even while he's in prison, he's there so he can be a witness uh, unto Caesar. I mean, uh, through it all, he sees... Uh, the workings of God and he's reflecting uh, and as God inspires him to pick up pen and parchment he begins to pin down these words and three times that word remembrance comes to mind can I say uh, the first time he uses remembrance he's uh, using that term uh, as he explains to Timothy he's been holding him up in prayer. Look with me again at verse number 3. Uh, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience uh, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers uh, night and day. Uh, Timothy's a young pastor. Timothy is facing opposition. Uh, Timothy is trying to uh, uh, urge and exhort and educate people uh, to the things of God. Uh, and there's some that don't want to hear it. Uh, and there's some bucking up on him. Uh, and there's some starting to make accusation against him. Uh, and he's looking at what's happened to Paul, uh, what's happened to the other apostles. Uh, and he's beginning to wonder, am I next? Uh, and uh, all of a sudden, uh, he gets a letter from the great apostle apostle himself uh, and one of the first things that he reads brother Ray uh, Paul says without ceasing uh, night and day uh, I'm praying for you uh, uh, what a blessing that must have been to that young preacher's heart uh, I don't know about you uh, but when somebody will reach out to me uh, and let me know preacher I've been a praying for you uh, it puts a little fuel in my tank uh, it puts a little humility in my soul uh, uh, the tank uh, that people would take time out of their important life uh, and uphold me before the Lord uh, and pray for me. That does something for me. Uh, but can I say this? Uh, when an older man of God, one of esteem, reaches out to me and says, Brother Doug, I've been praying for you. Oh, that does something for me. And can I say it does something for young Timothy here? to hear that the great apostle is praying for him. The second time that Paul uses the term remembrance, uh, he does so uh, in the remembrance uh, of the heritage of Timothy. Look with me in verse number 5. Uh, uh, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois uh, and thy mother Eunice, uh, and I am persuaded that in thee also... Uh, uh, Paul is not only letting Timothy know I'm praying for you night and day. Uh, he says, uh, now I'm thinking about your heritage. Uh, I'm thinking about your grandmother, Lois. Uh, 
and the unfeigned faith that she had uh, and that your mama Eunice uh, had the same unfeigned faith. Uh, and he says, and I'm persuaded, Timothy, uh, you've got the same faith in thee also. Uh, here's a young pastor uh, who's probably big dug uh, doubted a little bit, uh, wondering uh, if he's doing the right thing, uh, wondering if he has, Brother Josh, what it takes uh, uh, to continue on. Uh, Brother Adrian uh, wonders uh, if it's really worth it. Uh, and all of a sudden, the great apostle says, uh, I watched your grandmother, uh, and I saw the faith she had. Uh, and I watched your mama, uh, and I saw the faith that she has. Uh, and he said, Timothy, uh, don't hesitate. Uh, don't look back. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you've got the same faith in you. Uh, just keep on keeping on. Uh, keep your eyes on the Lord. Uh, I just preach to them. Uh, I let them know. Uh, Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Uh, oh, how that must have encouraged Timothy. The third time we see this uh, term remembrance, we find that it's of Timothy's holy calling. Look what he says in verse number 6. He says, Wherefore I put thee in remembrance. The other two Paul's remembering. But now he wants Timothy to remember some things. He said, I put thee in remembrance uh, that thou uh, stir up the gift of God. That word stir is the same word we would use for stoking a fire. You know, in the fire, the flames get down a little bit. Uh, you go over there and you blow on them coals uh, and you stoke them up a little bit. Uh, throw another log on the fire. Uh, he's wanting something stoked up inside of Timothy. Uh, and for Timothy, throw another log on the fire uh, uh, and get back on the firing line. He said, uh, I, I stir up that gift uh, 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 of God which is in thee by the putting uh, on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, uh, but of power uh, and of love uh, and of sound mind. Uh, let me just stop here, neighbor. Uh, 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 listen. Uh, if you're facing uh, uh, something that is causing you to dwell on fear uh, and to think about fear uh, and fear uh, is overcoming you, uh, let me remind you uh, that didn't come from the Lord. Uh, the Lord gives us a mind of power uh, and of love uh, and a sound mind. Uh, uh, God wants to help you, friend. Uh, God is for you. Uh, God will remind you he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Uh, hey, uh, the spirit of fear does not come from the Holy Ghost. Uh, it comes from our enemy. Uh, and here Paul, uh, through the Holy Ghost, uh, is being used uh, to help Timothy deal with this fear that is starting to grip his heart. Uh, he goes on to say in verse number 8, uh, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, uh, nor of me his prisoner, uh, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Uh, he's saying, Timothy, uh, don't be ashamed of the Lord in your life. Uh, hold your head up high. Uh, let him know you belong to God. Uh, don't be ashamed of me a prisoner. Uh, Paul said, I am walking in the lot God has for my life. Uh, don't be ashamed of me a prisoner. Uh, he said, uh, I go on and be a partaker of the afflictions. Uh, let him talk about you. Let him get mad at you. Uh, let him uh, try and rebuke you. Let him try and hold you in contempt. Uh, he said, just go on for God in the power of God. Uh, and look at verse number 9. Uh, who hath saved us uh, and called us uh, with an holy calling, uh, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose uh, and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Huh? Paul goes on to remind Timothy what God had done in Timothy. He saved him, and he called him with a holy calling. And can I say the gifts and callings of God are without repentance? He said, he called you. Now just uh, embrace the calling. Uh, stir up uh, uh, the gift that is in you uh, and go out and just take another swing at it. It's what he's telling him to do. Huh? Uh, but I'm not going to preach on any of that. I just kind of liked it all. Huh? 
I'm interested in verse number 5. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I wanted to preach a Mother's Day message. And y'all know me, just because it's holiday don't mean I'm going to preach on it. Usually I'm not going to preach on it. Uh, one year for Easter, I preached on hell. huh? I just preach what God gives me. But I, I started outlining a good thing on some of the mothers of the Bible, some of the strength of some of the mothers in the Bible, some of the sacrifices of some of the mothers in the Bible, some that submitted uh, their sons to the Lord in the Bible, uh, the select women of the Bible that God used. I had all kinds of wonderful, uh, wonderful outline. I got to look at it and God said, no. Uh, Brother Darrell, there's one place I don't want to be alone, and that's in the pulpit. Good Lord, don't forsake you, but he sure does make you miserable when you're not following him. So I said, okay, Lord. So I just got to reading. I ended up over here. And I'm interested in verse number 5. Verse number 5 says this, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, or, and, the, and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that in thee also. I got to thinking about that. What the grandmother had, she instilled in the daughter. And what that daughter had when she became a mother she instilled in her son and so with that in mind I want to preach on this thought some traits worth passing on some traits worth passing on now listen mama and daddy you're passing stuff on to your children whether you know it or not they got your DNA hmm they got that. There are times when our children say and do things, and I tell Miss Annette, they got that from you. But she's quick to remind me, oh, no, they got that from you. There are some things they can't help it because they got it from us. Can I say that sometimes our habits are passed on? Some of them good habits. Now, I don't know Brother Derek well, but Brother Derek is sitting in a bad spot today. I have enjoyed what fellowship I've had from Brother Derek, and I can't believe watching him eat all that cake last week. He didn't gain a pound. He was a ways a buck 30. Uh, but one thing I know about you, you're a hard worker. Cam, do you know your daddy's a hard worker? Yeah, you know that. Because he works hard to provide for y'all. I mean, it costs a lot of money to buy all them dresses for your sisters. Huh? He's a hard worker. Can I say that's a good trait to pass on? You're a hard worker. You pass it on them grandsons. That's a good trait. That's a good trait to pass on. You work hard at not working. That's a good, good. nah, I'm just teasing. He's a hard worker too. You know how you can tell the hard workers? They always look like they're half asleep. Because <laughs> they've been working hard. Sure. Huh? And even when they're not working, their bodies still geared toward working. That's a good trait to pass on. But can I say laziness isn't a good trait to pass on? Huh? You see, there's some... Traits not worth passing on, some traits that are worth passing on. But I got to thinking about some spiritual traits worth passing on. Can I say, first of all, we find it in this verse. Can I say a trait worth passing on is to have faith in God. Paul's remembering the unfeigned faith that's in Timothy. He said, wait a second, Timothy. Your grandmama had it, your mama has it, and you have it. Uh, 
What a wonderful picture of generational faith. Uh, it passed on from grandma all the way down to grandson. Uh, and I'm sure uh, uh, Timothy passed it on to his children. Uh, and if nothing else, uh, we're sitting here some 2,000 years ago hearing about it. Uh, and maybe some faith will be welled up in us. Because uh, the Bible says, So then faith cometh by hearing, uh, hearing by the word of God. Uh, and what a blessing to see a spiritual trait of having faith in God passed on. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. Uh, can I say, you can't get born again without faith. Uh, but God's given to man, every man, a measure of faith. Uh, and you have what it takes to be saved within you uh, by acting on the faith that God has given you. Uh, faith is an important thing. Uh, we are uh, uh, not able to be what we can be for God without faith. Uh, Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hope for uh, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, can I say today, uh, we live uh, not in a world uh, where folks walk by faith. Uh, we live in a world uh, where they depend uh, on sight. Amen. Seeing is not believing. Believing is based upon unseen things. Say, how do you know God's real? Have you ever seen Him? Nope. Have you ever heard His audible voice? Nope. But I've seen the effects of Him. And I have heard His voice. This is how He speaks to me. Hmm? Huh? And He does live in me. And He does bear witness within me that that is true. And He does within me let me know if I'm getting ready to make a wrong step. And he leads me and guides me into all truth. Uh, and he allows me to see things for what they are. Uh, all because uh, one day I had enough sense to put my faith in God. Uh, and he saved my soul. Uh, but faith isn't seen. This whole world is geared around what they see. And if they don't like what they see, uh, they'll doctor the photo. Make it to look uh, like they want it to see. Now, I've used this analogy a million times, but I'm using a million and one. I can look at this beautiful chair. i got four of them up here. I know what they're made of because I remember when I ordered them. And years ago, I was in the furniture business. These chairs have an oak frame. The frame is not stapled together like a lot of furniture today. The, the, the frame, my woodworker over there, Colonel, these frames uh, are dual dialed in. they got two dial rods. Uh, they're dual dialed in. They're screwed and glued at the corners. Hmm? Can I say it has double density foam? Can I say it has a Herculon fabric? Can I say they're very stout and very sturdy? Now, everything I told you is logic. It's things I see, things I know about it. Logic says, I can look at them four legs, I can know how this chair is constructed, and I know if I sit in it, uh, it'll hold me up. That's not faith. Amen. People want to say, well, I got faith that chair will hold me up. Well, you see it, and you see how it's made. You sure it's going to hold you up? Faith is looking at it, and you don't see any legs. But God said, sit in it, and you by faith, just believe God that it's going to hold you up. That's faith. When you can't figure it out, you can't see it, but God said do it, you just step out there and do it. That's faith. Huh? Can I say this? In Hebrews eleven six, it says, But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if we don't walk by faith, can we please God? No. Let me let, let you know a little story from memory lane. It's in my notes, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Share what in my notes either. I had been preaching for almost nine years. And in those nine years, I had been preaching the Bible, and I preached on faith. But Miss Sharon... 
when God called me to pastor that little church out in the country and I was making six figures and God says, you take that little church and Brother Ray's daddy came to me and said, well, if you come here, all we can afford to pay is 150 bucks a week. God said, take it. And we took it. And Miss Annette was out to here with Christian. He's a big boy. Huh? We didn't have any insurance. We didn't have any money. And I had to learn what faith was. Hmm? I'd preached on it. And I was going to have to live it. Can I say, Brother Brian, we never missed a meal. Now, logically, because she'd say, let's do a budget for the month. Logically, we'd look at what we had going out and what we had coming in, and we weren't going to make it. We weren't going to come close. What can I say? Every month, we made it. I said, how did that work? I don't know. Hmm? But you explain to me how a black cow could eat green grass and give white milk. Explain that to me. That don't make sense either. Huh? God didn't say he would always make sense. He just said he'd always back up his word. And he wants us to believe it. You know one of the best traits that I've passed down to my three children, and now I'm hoping to pass it down to my grandchildren, is if I can get her to sit still more than two seconds. By the way, she's a TV star. She was on Fox and Friends this morning at about 8.30. Uh, last night she was on that, what's that guy, Lester Down, or Lester Holt's uh, national broadcast. She was on there last night. She's, she's, a, she's an internet sensation. But she doesn't, she's got the, she's got the, she's got the, what word am I looking for? The attention span of a gnat. Yeah. Uh, the best thing I handed down to my children is just learn to trust God. He'll never lead you astray. And He'll always take care of you. Can I say, having faith in God is a good trait to pass on. Can I say this? The fear of God is a good trait to pass on. Now when I talk about the fear of God, I'm not talking about be afraid that if you do something wrong, God is going to punish you. That's not the fear of God. Fear of God is a reverential trust and respect for God. The Bible says this in Deuteronomy 8, 6, Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in His ways and to fear Him. Psalms 89, 7 says, God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints uh, and to be had in reverence of all them that are about Him. Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 says, uh, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Uh, listen, if you respect and reverence God, uh, you'll keep His commandments. Uh, you'll be obedient to Him. Uh, you'll want to please Him. Uh, you'll want to have Him first place in your life. Uh, uh, we need a whole lot more fear of God uh, than we have fear of the government uh, or fear of man uh, or fear that something bad can happen to us. Uh, I know people are scared to death go out in public because uh, they think there's looters and rioters in Florence, Kentucky. Uh, uh, you've watched too much CNN news. Uh, get out, get some fresh air. Uh, your brain needs the oxygen. Uh, there are folks that are afraid of everything. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, if God be for us, uh, who can be against us? Uh, we need to learn to fear and reverence God, uh, to follow Him and let Him lead in our lives. Uh, that's a good spiritual trait to pass on. Mm -hmm. You know what? You don't even have to pass it on to your heirs. You can pass it on to folks around you. Can I say this? Not only have faith in God, the fear of God, but can I say another trait that is good to pass on is to have a fire for God. Huh? The psalmist said in Psalm 63, 1, O God, thou art my God. 
Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. Uh, can I say, uh, I would to God we'd have the people of God uh, that had such a fire of God in their soul. Uh, they'd thirst after God. Even their flesh would thirst after God uh, in a dry and weary land. Uh, neighbor, look around. Uh, this world spiritually is about as dry uh, as it's ever been. Uh, and we need a group, uh, a remnant of folks uh, that just get a little fire in their soul for God uh, where even their very flesh thirst after God. Second uh, Chronicles 31 21 says, and in every work that he began in the service of the house of God uh, and, and in the law and in the commandments to seek his God, he did it with all his heart and he prospered. Uh, when we get that fire and we seek God with all our heart, Oh, we'll see prosperity like we've never seen. Amen. Problem is, we got a heart condition. We just seek Him with some of our heart. God, give us a fire for God. Thought about another trait be worth passing on is to be fervent towards God. That word fervent means to be dedicated. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 said, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another, not slothful in, in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. If we was as dedicated to God as we are to a myriad of other things in this world, we'd see a whole lot more sinners come to Christ. Mm. Listen, there's a lot of things in this world that aren't bad. I listen to some preachers, everything's bad. Huh? They have no balance in their life. Huh? Can I say? There's blessing and cursing in everything. And things aren't bad. It's what place we put them in our heart that makes it bad. If we put it above God, it becomes an idol. There are just some things that uh, we've got to learn to just have in moderation. And I'm not talking about your social drinking there, Colonel. I'm talking about other things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, you laughing at Phil. The only reason I got him, he caught my eye before you did. Uh, can I say there's nothing wrong with, with, with your Facebook account in moderation? But if you live on that thing 11 hours a day, you've got a problem. If you're interested in finding out when people take their bathroom breaks, you've got a problem. Right? There's a whole lot of stuff on here. Here's the real answer. Who cares? There are some people up there that are so caught up in themselves that they think you have a, have a right to know about them. I say, who cares? Huh? There's nothing wrong with Facebook in moderation. But if it takes precedence over this book, you've got a problem. Uh, uh, I'm just talking about being fervent towards God. Uh, if you're more interested in going to to Harbor Freight or to Lowe's or to Macy's or to anywhere else that's going to rob you blind instead of coming to the house of God, you got a problem. Hmm? Uh, nothing wrong with going to Lowe's. Ray practically has a residence there. It's where he gets his mail. Nothing wrong going to Lowe's as long as you go to church. We need to have fervency towards God. Another trait to pass on is to have focus. We're not focused right. We're focused on gaining rather than giving. We need to be focused on those that are without. We've got to be focused on those that are without goods. And I say there's a lot of people hurting. And I'm not talking about the guy sitting at the stop sign that says his dog's sick and he needs gas money to get down the road to get the dog to the vet. Uh, give him a bullet. That'll help the dog, okay? You know, and I'm just teasing. Lord have mercy. Had to do something to wake some of you up. I'm talking about people that really have needs, that need some, some food, needs to get through to the next week. Uh, we need to look and focus on those that are without goods. Maybe you haven't heard this. Inflation is up to 9% headed to 10. Uh, 
I'm talking about in 17 months. I pulled out. I needed gas in my truck the other day. I, I pulled out. And it was at 3.55 a gallon. So man, I sure did like it when it was under two. Hmm. Huh? Uh, I got Miss Nett got picked me up a sandwich and, pe- and and some fries. It was over 10 bucks. Huh? And it wasn't that good. If I'm getting a 10 dollar sandwich, it ought to at least be good. Huh? You know it's bad when McDonald's says they need to lower their prices, which is a blessing. That means everybody else will lower their prices than McDonald's does. You know, that's what drives the economy, you know, competition. But I saw on the news today, even Aldi is reducing. Aldi is nothing but generic stuff. And they're reducing their prices to help people out. People are hurting. We need to focus on those that are without goods. Uh, say, preacher, I don't have enough, but you probably got something you can give. Help somebody else. There is joy in learning the gift of giving. God loveth a cheerful giver. Huh? I never give to gain, but all I can say is every time I give for a godly cause, you know what happens? I gain. I prosper. Hmm? Uh, my stuff doesn't wear out as quick. Things go longer. Things are good. Huh? We need to focus on those that are without goods. We need to focus on those that are without glee. Have you seen how miserable people are? Huh? It seems to me like they had to watch a weekend of Joe Biden <laughs> trying to give a speech. <laughs> Israel. <laughs> Got to go to Delaware. I mean, that's all he says. Huh? And some of you have been watching that for a weekend. That's why you have no glee. Mm. Others, because we've had two beautiful days have had to work in the yard. How many have worked in the yard the last couple of days? Let's be honest. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. For Mother's Day, Miss Nett wanted a few things done around the house, and she got them the last two days. I can't move today. I am hurting. Uh, but it's worth it because that's what she wanted. But it robbed me of my glee. She's happy, happy, happy. That's all that matters. I'm happy, happy, happy because I got till next May to do it again. Huh? Uh, we got to focus on those without glee. You know, the joy of the Lord's our strength. I tell you all the time, just go out in the world and smile. People think you're up to something. But it's contagious. Why? Just do this. Go anywhere in a public setting. And look at somebody and smile. You know what they're going to do? They're going to smile back. And they don't even know why they smile. It's just a trained response. You've got to focus on those without glee and share the Lord with them. But we need to also focus on those without God. Amen. Everywhere you'll run into somebody that needs the Lord. And don't take for granted that they know how to get to the Lord. Most people in our area have never heard a clear-cut presentation of the gospel. God help us. I thought about this. I'm about done. Another trait worth passing on is is let people have some fiber about them. What are you talking about? Some character. Wouldn't this world be better if folks just had character? They treated others with respect. They were honest. They were trustworthy. Those are good traits to pass on. Just have some character about you. Huh? Can I say, how about the fiber of having confidence towards God? You know what to help people to have no confidence if they learn to have confidence in God? Because when you have confidence in God, all of a sudden you start developing some confidence because you realize you belong to God. And then how about the fiber of showing some concern? Learn to be sympathetic or empathetic with people. Nothing will help people more than you telling them you've been through the same thing and tell them how God delivered you from it. Then I'll say this lastly. A trait that is worth passing on is the trait of forgiveness. I listen to a lot of people, you know, complain about their problems and everything. You know what? People are full of bitterness. 
And I'm not saying that people haven't been done wrong. I'm not saying they don't have problems. I'm not saying they don't have issues. I preached not long ago, issues, issues, we all have issues. But a big issue that would help a a, a whole lot of people with their problems if they'd learn to forgive. So I don't have to forgive. They didn't ask me to forgive. That's because they're not smart enough to ask you. But forgiveness is not about them, it's about you. It's about helping you overcome some of the things that you've got bottled up that are bogging you down. We've got to learn to be forgiving. Do you know the Bible commands us to forgive? In Ephesians 4.32 it says, And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. If you have been a recipient of the grace of God and God has forgiven you your sins, you are commanded to forgive other people who have done you wrong. Can I say, if you'd learn to forgive folks, you wouldn't get as bitter at folks. Luke 6.37 says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. You want God to forgive you, then you better learn to forgive others. Now listen, these are great traits to pass on, and there's so many more. I had about 14, I had to cut it down. Let these things be developed in you, and then pass them on to somebody else. If you're a grandparent or a parent, Develop these things in your own life and then pass them on to your children and your grandchildren. Young people, pass them on to your schoolmates because I guarantee you they don't hear much of this stuff. Hmm? If they're dressing up as furries, well, you don't have any classmates. Good deal. But if they're dressing up as dogs and cats, and they want to be treated like a dog and a cat, grab a stick and tell them to fetch, and then lock the door after they go outside and don't let them back in. Huh? That's where dogs go, outside. Hmm? But no, they, they, they're not taught principles and taught things from the Scriptures. If so, they wouldn't be dressed like a dog and a cat. That's stupid. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to say stupid, Lucas. That might, that might warp you. They're morons, okay? <laughs> People just don't know. We think everybody's heard this. We think everybody sits in church and hears truths and practical things for our lives. All most people hear is what Charlie Brown's adults did. Blah, 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 blah. So share it with your, your, your fellow classmates. Share it with your coworkers. Be good to them. Share it with that boss that gets under your nerves. Be good to them. But Joseph, share it with your teacher that gets on your nerves. Just be good to her. Huh? Bring her an apple every day. Those, those don't know he's homeschooled. His mom is his teacher. She shows no mercy. She grades on a curve because she's got a warp paddle. Uh, she's shaking her head, no. Uh, not what I hear. Uh, I hear you as part of the Gestapo. That's what I hear. That's the trait passed on to you. It's what I hear. Uh, <laughs> somebody good for her. I mean, that same person don't want the Gestapo coming to their house, huh? Let these traits be developed in you. Let me ask you this. When was the last time you thanked God for the things that He has developed in you? When was the last time you just reflected and remembered what you were before God found you? And look at how far He's brought you. When was the last time you encouraged another child of God to just keep on keeping on like Paul's doing to Timothy right here? When's the last time 
that you went to somebody and said, you know what, because of your faith, God developed in me some faith. I saw it, and I started seeking God, and he showed me in the Word of God some things, and God helped my faith. You see, no man lives unto himself, no man dies unto himself. Somebody has impacted your life for Christ. And Paul said, we're a debtors of the gospel. We are indebted to share it with somebody else. When's the last time you really passed on a trait to somebody else? God help us to take these truths and the truths of the Bible and invest in somebody else. Let's all stand. Brother Quint, come get a song of invitation. While he comes, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we love you. Thank you for your good grace. We pray, Father, you'd wink at our ignorance and you'd help instill these truths into our hearts and our lives. Lord, I pray there's somebody here today that doesn't know anything about the forgiveness of God because they've never been born again. I pray today they'd come and let us take a Bible and show them how to be saved. God, I pray for your children, those things you have developed in them. Lord, you'd stoke them, and Lord, help them to share and develop into somebody else. God, I have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Glorify your name. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.